morning I'm coming home from work and I'm listening to the boxing voice with Ness. And he did an interview with Leonard Ellerby. And I'm gonna tell you like this. It's very hard for me to listen to an interview with Leonard Ellerby when he's talking about Javante Tank Davis. He don't wanna reveal anything he don't want to go into the details of anything fine and dandy but when you talking to boxing fans like they don't know anything about the business they don't know anything about the sport of boxing and I can't tell you anything that happens behind closed doors behind the curtains and all those things about Javante Tank Davis and who he's fighting but when it comes to everybody else you can tell you what Teofimo Lopez and his dad is doing wrong you can um, you can give all kind of high praise to Devin Haney and Bill Haney, but at the same time, you can't come up with any valid reason why you're not going to fight Devin Haney. You can't come up with a real valid reason why you're not going to fight uh, Teofimo Lopez. And then when it comes to Regis Prograce, or when it comes to Josh Taylor, you have no legitimate reasons why you won't make fights with these guys. They, they not known, they don't bring anything to the table, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they not a cash uh, cow, they not bringing butts to the seats. But when it comes to talking about Javante Tank Davis, it's always double talk, you know what I'm saying? All, hush, hush, you know, uh, all these, you know what I'm saying, secret, shh, we're not going to reveal this, we're not going to reveal that, other than we're going to say Javante Tank Davis is a superstar and we're manufacturing his career to only fight guys that we know he can look great against you know what i'm saying and it's just hard for me to sit there and listen to that type of bullshit to be honest it's it's bullshit you know what i'm saying it's just bullshit like at the end of the day we all love javante tank davis you know what i'm saying his his backstory him coming out of the you know what i'm saying the eels of uh, baltimore and facing so much adversity as a youth going through you know what i'm saying um going through like foster homes and having issues with his parents man we all go through different situations in this life growing up so we can always value and appreciate a young guy that has made himself into a uh, a superstar that's great but we talking about the sport of boxing and we want to see the best fight the best you know what i'm saying and there's other guys out there that are proving themselves to be the best in 135 and 140 you got josh taylor who's unified undisputed who beat you know what i'm saying who went through tournaments and beat everybody who beat um branch check and and, and 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 uh what's his name uh he beat regis pro grace and he turns around and beat jose ramirez he's reigning supreme at 140. If Javante Tank Davis want to go put his flag in 140, he got to fight that guy. And at the least, he should fight Regis Progress. There's no legitimate reason why, other than I'm not going to help Bob Arum or, or Eddie Hearns do their job for them. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason why you can't fight Devin Haney because when it comes to Teofimo Lopez, Teofimo Lopez, he don't, he not making no, he not bringing in anything to the table. When it comes to Devin Haney, oh, no disrespect, I love what those guys are doing, but there's always all these ifs and buts when it comes to Ryan Garcia, when it comes to uh, Devin Haney, when it comes to Teofimo Lopez, when it comes to Josh Taylor, when it comes to Regis Progress. You know what I'm saying? And then you end up with him fighting, uh, what's his name? Maybe, maybe a Roly Romero. You know what I'm saying? But you can fight Mario Barrios. And look, I just don't like it. I just don't don't talk to people like they stupid. Don't talk down to people like they don't know anything. You know everything. You're not gonna reveal anything about your people, but you can throw everybody else in their business. You can tell you can say what everybody else is doing wrong. But what you're doing right, why why I just don't like it. What you doing is working for Javante Tank Davis, but for how long? How long do we want to see him fighting subpar opponents? 
how long do we want to see Javante Tank Davis not go into 50-50 fights or have to go into a fight where you got to build this other guy up out of nowhere just to see him get knocked out and, 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 and we don't see Tank really face no real adversity or fight someone that like is intriguing enough to where we say Javante Tank Davis might lose this fight not he might not make weight you know what I'm saying or he's not going to show discipline to make weight we want to see him fight someone that's adversity we don't want to see Javante Tank Davis lose fighting someone he gonna have no business fighting like we don't need to see him jumping up and fighting 147 and fighting Keith Thurman even though if he fights Keith Thurman so be it but we don't need to see him jump up there and fight not Keith Thurman but fight if you're gonna go to 147 then fight the real 147 guys right fight uh Boots Ennis you know what I'm saying fight Virgil Ortiz we don't need to see that. I don't need to see that personally. I don't, I don't can speak for myself. I don't need to see Javante Tank Davis fight Virgil Ortiz or Jerron Boots Ennis. I don't need to see him in 147. If he's going to be at 140, I want to see him fight Josh Taylor or Regis Progress. If he's not going to do that and he's going to fight at 135, fight Devin Haney or Teofimo Lopez or even Ryan Garcia. Make it make sense. I don't like watching interviews with Leonard Ellaby. Sleepy going in, lively coming out. They be wondering what we talking about. 